and happy Friday. Today I want to talk to you about three more dead friends. These are three really inspiring and exceptional people and as is the case with all of my dead friends, these are people I greatly respect and admire. I wish that I could talk to them in person. And I want to tell you what I've been thinking about relative to them lately because I'm making a major life change and I've been thinking about how all three of these friends made some decisions that led to major life changes. First of all, let me tell you about my dead friend, composer Gabriel Fauré. Fauré, through a variety of his background and life circumstances, got off to a slow start being recognized as a leading composer of his generation, which he absolutely was. In his 30s, he went through bouts of depression, partly because of a marriage engagement that was broken off, but also because he felt that he was not achieving success as a composer. Things finally started taking off for him, not when he was young, but as he progressed through his life and career and he proved what he could do. He eventually became director of the Paris Conservatory when he was 60 years old, and as many people thought would be the case, he enacted a lot of reforms there. He modernized it considerably, he updated the curriculum, and he stayed in that position with the Paris Conservatory from 1905 till 1920 when illness and deafness forced him to resign. And in that position, not only did he become recognized much more extensively as a leading composer in the world of his day, but he also influenced drastically the musical education and experiences of an amazing generation of French musicians who attended the Paris Conservatory. He taught a lot of composers who went on to become very famous, but he made a large number of musical and educational reforms while he was director there. So by becoming director and staying in that position at the Paris Conservatory for roughly 15 years, he really did make a huge difference in the lives of many leading musicians of his day. For I truly did have an impressive list of important composers who were his students, including Maurice Ravel and Nadia Boulanger. I want to talk now just briefly about my stunningly impressive dead friend, Nadia Boulanger. I've mentioned her before, and if you hear stories of her musicianship, her ear and her musical memory, it's truly, it's stunningly impressive. There's no doubt that she was a brilliant musical genius. And so was her younger sister, Lily Boulanger. Lily was always sickly from the time that she was a small child, but she was also recognized as a tiny child to be a musical prodigy. And her older sister, Nadia, took it upon herself in every possible way to nurture Lily's talent. They seem, from my perspective all these decades later, to be truly an admirable pair of sisters who were both supportive and exceptionally talented and wanted each other to succeed. And Nadia especially was really the kind of mother and mentor because she was both older and Lily was so sickly and needed a lot of support. Nadia was a major contender to win the Prix de Rome, the big composition contest in Paris. That's probably the largest composition competition that's ever existed in the world. Nadia was a very close contender to win that, and there were a number of reasons why she didn't. She did kind of shoot herself in the foot, but there were also a lot of politics because she was a woman. But her sister Lily did win the Prix de Rome, that may also have involved some politics. There was some talk about how Lily being sickly would never take a career away from a man, and Nadia could. But it all goes to show how fabulously talented these two sisters were. Lily unfortunately did die at the age of 24, and Nadia at the time was 30. This was a huge event for Nadia, and it really was hard for her to lose her sister. And as a mark of love and honor and respect for her sister, Nadia made the decision that she would put her own composition career aside and not aspire to be a composer herself, but in honor of her sister and the fact that she had been her sister's mentor and teacher, she would dedicate herself to teaching other composers, and that's exactly what she did. She had been a teacher to Lily through her sister's entire short life, so Nadia saw becoming an educator as the best way she could honor her sister's memory. In making this decision at the age of 30, Nadia profoundly influenced the entire course 
of Western music because she became the teacher of so many great composers. She was known for helping them all to find their individual voice, not to sculpt to them into some mirror image of herself or Lily. She taught not only French musicians, but musicians from all over the world, including Copland and Carter and Piazzolla and Villa Lobos and so many others. We did lose from her more music that she herself might have written, and I think that's a pity. But she left for us this incredible legacy of major talent that she taught and nurtured and sent out into the world, and we're all enjoying their art to this day. If we're not, we certainly should be. Now I want to tell you about one more of my dead French friends who lived in this same time period that we're already discussing, named Philippe Gobert. Since I'm a flutist, this story is close to my heart and was unexpected when I learned it. He was a wonderful flutist who was discovered as a musical prodigy at a young age. He was hand-selected by his teacher and mentor, Paul Taffinel, who flutists recognize these days as being the father of the modern school of flute playing in the 20th century and beyond. Taffinel hand-selected Gobert to be his successor at the Paris Conservatory and propagate the next generation of wonderful flute players at the Paris Conservatory. But a few interesting things happened in the life of Philippe Gobert when he was around 40 years old. He came into a few new positions. When he was 40, he decided to put solo flute performance aside in order to focus on other things. In addition to being a performer, he was a teacher and he was also a composer and a conductor. He made the decision to deprioritize flute performance in order to give himself room to excel in these other areas. He came into two conducting posts and he wanted to do his very best at them and he wanted to leave compositions behind. He realized that our time and our energies are limited and he wanted to give himself room to leave a legacy as a composer and a conductor, not only as a flutist. And now what we really have from him to remember him and understand him and appreciate his soul and his art is his musical compositions, most of which are written for the flute. Hopefully I've told you some stories that are somewhat new to you or completely new to you about my cherished dead friends who may also well be your cherished dead friends. If they're not, you should get acquainted with them. They are so worth knowing. But what all of this is leading to is that I have recently made a major life decision and I want people to understand it a bit, especially my former students, because I want my students to understand that I've made this life decision not because I'm tired of teaching or because I'm leaving them or forgetting them. I'll always have such important memories and a real place in my heart for all of my former students. And I told you how old my dead friends were when they made major life decisions or had major life changes. And I'm not gonna tell you exactly how old I am, but I will tell you that I have recently quit my full-time professor of flute gig that I've had for over 20 years. It's been a full, long career in itself. I'm one of the few, very most senior faculty members at my music school where I've been teaching. So nearly everyone has moved on or retired. I kind of feel like I'm retiring after this long, full career but instead I'm just moving on to some new things. I fully intend to continue teaching. I should have at least as much time to work on performance opportunities. I have recently quit to become artistic director at a wonderful little pre-college near where I live called the Gifted Music School. They've asked me to become artistic director at their school and I have agreed I'm going to leave a link to a video in this video description that describes the Gift of Music School. It was made a few years ago, but it gives you an idea of why I'm leaving my post being a professor of flute to go and be a director at this wonderful pre-college that has given me the opportunity to do it. I'm going to continue performing and adjudicating and recording, and the Gift of Music School has expressed that this is a priority for them, that I continue to be involved as a teacher, as a performer so that I have all those experiences to bring to the job. I did complete my schooling quite young. It's been over 20 years that I've been in this position 
every year starts to look remarkably the same as they cycle by year after school year after school year. So I decided that like some of my dead friends that I've been talking about today and whose lives I have been pondering, I should also make a major life change and embrace learning new things, developing new skills, taking new risks and not feeling too safe, not too happy in my rut, <laughs> but moving forward and learning and doing new things. I fully intend to keep doing flute tube because I've loved doing it. There's a chance I'm gonna have to start missing a Friday here or there. I haven't missed a single video release since my first one, April 3rd, 2020, which I started because of COVID. But if a Friday comes and goes and I didn't manage to post a video, just know I'll be right back. I have to see where this new chapter takes me, what kinds of things demand my time. It may not affect my publication schedule, but there's a chance it may. I'd say there are two main reasons that I'm making this life change. One is that I feel the Gift of Music School is a wonderful school with so much wonderful potential. They've been growing like crazy, and so not only do I feel I can help them, but I feel that at this stage in their growth, perhaps they need my help. And the second reason is just the length of time that I've been a professor of flute. I could continue doing the job for another 20 years or more, but the issue with that is that at this point, I do feel I could sleepwalk through my job. I don't want to feel I'm in a state where I'm kind of sleepwalking through my life because I know exactly how it's going to go. I'm likely to compose a lot more like I used to growing up. I may branch out and be a bit more entrepreneurial with offering online lessons. I'm really excited to see what different things I can explore. I need to learn new skills and try new things. I've enjoyed giving so much of my life to my approximately 15 flute majors that I've always had at one time, but that is a major commitment to those 15 or so people at a time. And I do feel that at the Gift of Music School, I can impact a lot more people, a lot more music students, faculty, community members, families who love music, and I'm excited to see what I can do for all of them. So, <laughs> I'm choosing this path because it is an unknown. I need some change and growth, and I'm excited to see where the journey takes me.